It say, blessed are those who fear to do wrong, but the stubborn are headed for serious trouble. Blessed are those who fear to do wrong, but the stubborn are headed for serious trouble. It's telling us, blessed are those that fear to do. Hey, I'm not. I'm not going. I don't want to be a part of that. See, I grew up in the era where we had to do stupid stuff to be cool. We had to follow and do these things to be accepted. Oh, let me go rob this store. Let me go. Let me go beat this person up, or let me go do, just to be accepted. And to say I don't want to do that, you was looked at as a coward. So. It's telling us here, blessed are those who fear to do wrong, meaning you don't care. I don't care what you think of me. I'm not going to go do something to make you see that I'm tough or make you see I'm not scary. Listen, I don't want to do wrong. What's wrong with not wanting to do wrong? Wow. Hey, Aramis, leave that light alone. What's wrong with not wanting to do wrong? It's okay to not want to do wrong. I don't understand where this concept is came up that we have to do something to prove something. We got to do something wrong or tough or something a little edgy to make people accept us. I don't care then. If you can't accept me for being a stand-up citizen in this country or in this world, maybe I don't need to be a part of your friendship. Maybe we don't need to be friends. If you can't accept me because I don't want to do wrong, I don't want to talk behind your back, I don't want to talk down on people, I don't want to get over on people, I, you know, I'm not one of those type of people, I'm the type of person, you drop a hundred dollar bill on the ground, I'm not going to step my foot on it, and wait till you walk off, then pick it up and say, the Lord blessed me with a hundred dollars, no, I'm a hey, hey, you dropped your money, and give it to, give it to the person, amen, so, it says, blessed are those who fear to do wrong, but the stubborn Aramis. This boy is something else, y'all. Blessed are those blessed are those who fear to do wrong, but the stubborn are headed for trouble. People that serious trouble. People that don't listen. My mama used to always tell me it's warning before destruction. It's warning before destruction. These people don't want to listen to the warning. We got to get out the way because you don't want to be destroyed with them because you still sitting there trying to warn them. Hey, warn them. I'm, I got to go. I, this is what was this is what I was led to say. I done told you, you do what you want to do with it. Now, there's a scripture in Ezekiel. I can't remember what book, what uh, chapter Ezekiel, but it's the watchman where uh, the Lord tells uh, the watchman to go out and warn the people. And when he warned the people, those that will listen will be saved, but those that won't listen will perish. But the, the, th the reason why the watchman, the Lord told the watchman to share is so the blood wouldn't be on their hands. When God gives you something to, to, to say to somebody, don't hold on to it. Because when you hold on to it, say, for instance, God shows you somebody getting into a car accident. Or if you have a dream about a person having to get into a car accident and you don't go tell this person, hey, be careful on the road. I'm, you know, I want to pray that God gives you traveling mercy, but be careful on the road. If you don't say nothing about that and then they get in a car accident, the blood is on your hand. Now you got to live with that for the rest of your life, knowing that God gave you something to warn them and you didn't say nothing about it. Then something ended up happening to them. Now you sitting there like, I didn't say nothing. Man, God showed me that in a dream or God told me that in prayer. You know, so you have to go say it so the blood won't be on your hands. If they don't listen, then, you know, not like that. But if they don't listen, you you don't feel so bad because you warned them. You told them, you know, you told them. So, oh, yeah, my, he, he, he waved. He up there with the light switch. <laughs> he, he, his, his hand probably up to the elbow. He big. <laughs> but, yeah, that was him back there flicking that light switch. He got his butt spanked, too. Um, but yeah, verse 15, verse 15 says a wicked ruler is a dangerous, a wicked ruler is as dangerous to the poor as a roaring lion to, or an attacking bear. I'm sorry. A wicked ruler is as dangerous to the poor as a roaring lion or an attacking bear. A wicked ruler is dangerous to to the poor. A wicked ruler only cares about things that make them better. Now, for instance, the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. That is a wicked ruler. If you don't have a heart for poor people, that's wicked. What did Jesus say before he started his ministry? Right after he got baptized, he said, 
The spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the good news to the poor. His whole mission was to go back for the poor. You know, the ones that were poor in spirit were just felt like they weren't worthy. That's who Jesus was with. So if you don't have compassion on the poor, you are wicked. If you can't, I mean, you might not have the money for the poor. You might not have the housing space for the poor. You might not have, you know, financial or material things for the poor. But if you have a heart for the poor, you good. But if you like, you should have made better choices in your life. Oh, that's just cold right there. You looking at these people doing bad out here. You should have showed your food stamps. You know, you just don't have no compassion on poor people. It says that right here, it says a wicked ruler is as dangerous to the poor as a roaring lion or an attacking bear. If a lion or a bear came running at you, you your options to fight back, unless you David, you ain't going to win that fight. David is the only person I know in the Bible that killed a lion and a bear with his bare hands. <laughs> but us, if a lion or a bear came right now, it's a rat. They, that's, this is what this is saying. This is how a wicked ruler is to poor people. When a wicked ruler is in, um, is, is, is in leadership, poor people are like, man, it's a rat for us, man. We might as well just go on and just end it all. You know, so it tells us right here in verse 15, a wicked ruler is as dangerous to the poor as a roaring lion or a attacking bear. Verse 16 says, a ruler with no understanding will oppress his people, but one who hates corruption will have a long life. Want to live long? Hate corruption. There's some people that's out here that's getting money. They just start turning away. And they're justifying it by saying, I don't got nothing to do with it. But you're turning away, you turning away your eye from it. You're allowing it to go on. As long as it, I, I mean, I, that ain't me. That ain't me. As long as I'm not doing it. Hey, come on. That's not good. That's not good. A ruler with no understanding will oppress his people. But one who hates corruption will have long life. A ruler with no understanding right there. You don't even know what's going on. You don't even understand what's going on. That's causing oppression to people that need you. You're the ruler, you're the leader. They're depending on you and you don't even understand or know where you are going. It's making it worse for the people that God has allowed you to be over. <laughs> a murderer's torment, a, a murderer's tormented conscience will drive him into the grave. Don't protect him. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. That's deep right there. A murderer's tormented conscience will drive him into the grave. Don't protect him. What he did is going to eat him up. You don't got to, you don't, listen, it's, it's a murderer. It tells, don't protect him. I see this go on all the time. Some people murder, for instance, the kid that shot up the school. I see so many people justifying why he did it. Oh, he was bullied. He was bullied. Hey, listen. Them kids in that classroom didn't bully him. He didn't, whoever he was bullied by, he didn't kill. He killed some innocent children that had nothing to do with his being bullied in the past. Oh, you know, he just had a rough he had a rough life. Man, stop standing. Listen, the brother, listen. The brother shot up some kids. His conscience is going to eat him up. We don't need nobody making it easy for him. Yeah, I did have a rough. Yeah, it's because I was bullied. That's why. Listen, uh-uh, listen. I mean, he was wrong for what he did, hands down. I'm not, I don't care, you know, because <laughs> a lot of this, this is, this is starting to, consume our world this bullying thing the, everybody is falling back into that i was bullied that's why i did it i was bullied that's why i did it maybe this it's a different upbringing because i was bullied too and it didn't do nothing but make me tougher it didn't make me want to kill people and wallow into this corner of oh, the reason why i'm like this is because i was bullied listen and i know this might seem insensitive and i'm sorry if it do when you groan <laughs> when you are a grown person, you complaining about being bullied when you was a kid 
Listen, come on. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. We because I it's it's grown people doing this too. I'm talking about 30s, 40s, and 50s. I was bullied when I was a kid. So you what happened to you? Some kids, some stuff some kids did to you when you was a kid is affecting your adult life. A lot of stuff happened to me when I was a kid. I look back at that stuff like what it does teach me is how to teach my kids and raise my kids in a way to where they won't have to struggle with things like that. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, right. I'm not going to pay my bills because I was bullied when I was a little. No, here it is. I'm not going to pay my bills because bill, pay, bill companies bullied my mom and dad and it traumatized me when I was a child. So I'm not paying my bills either. Um, you know, and I know we, I know I'm making comedy out of it, but it just leads us back to we need Christ. I know it's easy to say when we have Jesus. It's easy for us that believe in God. It's easy for us that have Jesus to say all you need is Christ. So I'm trying to be fair, but the on the flip side of the coin, these people won't even give Jesus a chance. They won't even give him a try. Okay, well, let me try Jesus. Okay, and all, this, 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 that, and this happened to me. Let me try Jesus and see what happens. They will not try it. And it ain't even their fault. It's the enemy. He's throwing so many obstacles in their way. He's whispering so many things in their ears. As soon as they mind, think about Jesus. Here come the devil. Uh-uh. That, that ain't mine. Nah, them people are judgmental. Those people are, you know, and next thing you know, this person finds this, finds himself backed in the corner with nobody. Now, the saints didn't turn away from helping these types. Somebody, somebody encouraged them not to go that way. God is not real or those people are, you know, it's so many, so many blows thrown at the people of God that when somebody needs God, there's a whole mob of different type of um, movements out there to say you don't need God. You don't need God. You don't need, and then they come with stories. You can't, you can't, you can't condemn the people of God because somebody that was saved or somebody that represent God did something wrong. Hold that person accountable. I see this a lot. A lot of people, I don't go to church because the pastor was sleeping with such and such and slept with her. That was that pastor. That, that ain't the pastors. That's not what pastors do. That's what that pastor did. These are people have to still understand this is these people are still human. They're still fighting temptations and lust too. So you have to pray for them. But the enemy, the enemy gets the enemy gets the leadership to fall for something, and then he puts them out there as the um as the the the, the whole thing of church. Oh, this pastor, for instance, Eddie Long. Remember that pastor Eddie Long and he got caught messing with that little boy or messing with a boy. Everybody just condemned the whole church because of Eddie Long's, what Eddie Long did. That ain't the whole church. That was Eddie Long. People still be having hidden things in them that they're not telling you about. So that's why discernment, <laughs> salute. That's why discernment, discernment, because you will feel it. You can, uh-uh, I'm not supposed to be here. Let me get out of here. Get, get away from that church. There's other churches out there. There's other ministries that you are supposed to be a part of, but don't let one person's mistake in um in the church mess it up for the whole church because the whole church is not like that. All pastors are, don't sleep around. All the deacons ain't sleeping with all the women in the church. These are just the things that people highlight. They don't highlight the healings that took place. They don't highlight the breakthroughs that took place. They don't highlight the uh the um miracles that took place. They don't highlight the um the um the leadership qualities that a good church, a good pastor and first lady may have that helps marriages and relationships. They don't talk about that. They just talk about the bad stuff that happened and don't even realize you're doing the work of the devil. You're doing what the devil wanted you, needed you to do. I need you to go in there and smear the church so people won't go no more. So we have to be careful um, with that. It says the blameless will be rescued from harm but the crooked will be suddenly destroyed. If you ain't did nothing wrong, don't worry about uh, don't worry about um, 
bad coming back on you. If you put your faith and trust in God, he will rescue you. He will see you through it. I'm a living witness to that. Um, just real quick, one of my friends back in 2003, we were all standing out, hanging out in front of one of my friends' house. So one of my buddies came across the street to come hang with us. And as he crossed the street, the police pulled up. He had a gun on me, threw the gun on the ground and lamped by my feet. The police took me to jail. I had a, um, I already had, I was on probation for um, possession of a firearm. So I had one strike. So when he threw that gun by me, they put me in jail with, they um, tried to give me two strikes with 16 years. Um, I know I didn't touch that gun. I know I didn't do it at all. I had faith and trust that God will see me through. We went all the way to trial and I got acquitted on um, um, both cases, they had me in there for ex-felon with a firearm and gang member with a gun with intent to do harm to a peace officer. Well, I got acquitted on both um, on both cases, and I really, I really had to put God to the test. Like, hey, Lord, you know it was. If nobody else know, you, me, and the, my friend that threw that gun knows I didn't do this. So. I'm putting my trust and faith in you, God. I'm believing that you're going to get me out of this. And sure enough, God got me out of it. God uh, really um, brought me through that one. And that right there let me know I was innocent and I didn't go to jail for it. And that police officer came, testified, all that. His, testi his testimony was so bogus. And the color of clothes that he said I had on was not even the color. It was just, he just sabotaged himself trying to lie on me. But Every time I see this scripture, it just takes me there. The blameless will be rescued from harm, but the crooked will be suddenly destroyed. And sure enough, that man, he couldn't work that beat anymore because I was in jail. Don't get me wrong. I was in jail for about eight months fighting it. And they, them police officers was in my neighborhood harassing my brothers, all my friends, all the neighbors. We know that you guys are trying to stand up for him. Them neighbors came and, um, you know, they did a testimony for me, uh, testified on my behalf, told me he takes out our trash. This is a good brother in the community. Man, they told the truth. And all of their testimonies were um, the truth and they didn't have to try to make me look good or anything. What they said was what it was. And the police looked like the bozos. So he messed up, sabotaged his whole beat. He got moved to a whole nother area and all kind of stuff. He was mad. He was mad about it, but it's just interesting. This is a very true scripture that it says uh, the blameless will be rescued from harm, but the crooked will suddenly be destroyed. A hard worker has plenty of food, but a person who chases fantasies end up in poverty. Woo! I know some of y'all want to tell y'all sons and daughters that right now. <laughs> Everybody want to be a rapper. <laughs> Everybody wanted to, you know, chase these fantasies. Now, I'm not saying that they might not have skills, but for instance, my son, my son is a, uh, he got skills. My 17 year old son got skills and he wants to stay in LA to rap. And I told him, I said, LA has a plethora of rappers. What is different about you than them? And when I said that, he started thinking, I said, this is Hollywood we're dealing with here. These rappers nowadays, I hate to say it, these rappers nowadays are selling out. They're doing something with themselves that they don't want to do to be somebody that they want to be, if that makes any sense. So I was telling my son, I said, you're going to have to do something that you don't agree with in order to stand out over all these millions of 17-year-olds in LA that's trying to be rappers. So, you know, don't chase the fantasies. <laughs> strings, exactly. Strings attached. Don't chase the fantasies. It says a hard worker. Work hard. Get out there and do something. If you if, if you have the skill to rap, that's going to happen. That don't mean you shouldn't get a job somewhere to take care of yourself right now as you prepare your albums and work on your music. You still need to work hard. You still need to do something with your life. Don't just give up on being a productive citizen in the country to be a rapper. Most of today's rappers are overdosed on Percocets and syrup and smoke weed. They all take on the same costume. They got to smoke weed. It's this whole little persona. And I even see my son sometimes and I just be like, I, I tell him all the time. I, and he, this is what I love about him because he listens. He gets it because I rap. 
So I got, it's like a cheat code. I, I'm 41 years old. I can give them some of the game that I got from trying to be a rapper. And um, I tell them, I say, you have to do something that nobody else is doing. Everybody, all the rappers smoke weed. All the rappers pop Percocets. All the rappers sip syrup. All the rap, they all do one of those things, drink. They might not do all of them, but one of those things I named cocaine, they, they do one of them. You be the rapper that don't drink or smoke. You be the rapper that raps about something they don't rap. They all rapping about Dracos and females and money and you rap about something else. Put yourself to the test. Work hard. You want to be a rapper? Work hard at your craft. Don't take the easy route. Don't do what everybody else is doing because you're going to get thrown into the same category as all them other rappers. <laughs> but it says hard work. A hard worker has plenty of food, but a person who chases fantasies end up in poverty. Real talk. If you work hard, you can pay. If you work hard, you can endorse your craft. If you work hard, you can and you can invest in what you want to do. So if you're working hard, say you got a job and you're making twenty dollars an hour, you can take money from what you earn and put it into your fantasy per se. You won't end in poverty that way because you're working hard to do what you want to do. Don't kick the hard work to the side and try to get your fantasy accomplished because you will end up in poverty. It's very hard. Very seldom do you see people just really rise from nothing. And most of the ones that rise from nothing, they don't be there that long like that. They have that started from the bottom story, but after that, it's just, okay, what's new? What are you doing the same thing everybody else doing? What's special about you? 21 says, no, oh, 20 says, the trustworthy person will get a rich reward, but a person who waits, I mean, a person who wants quick riches will get into trouble. Mm, this is game, y'all. Proverbs 28 and 20 says, a trustworthy person will get a rich reward. Trustworthy. I can depend on you. Dependable. Um, I, can I can trust, I can put my trust in you investing in you. This person will get a rich reward, but a person who wants quick riches will get into trouble. A person that tries to run off. Say you invest in a person, you give them all this money to do something and they take off. They're going to get into trouble either with the law or they don't know what type of person they ran off on and they catch back up to them later. Now this person, and listen, what sense do it make to take a lump sum of money, a lot of money from a person, run off on them and expect to be um, this person in the world, all you're doing is letting them know where you at. So if I tell you, you give me $3 million, I'll run off on you and I become successful. I'm in your face every day. That means it's not hard to find me now. So now I done just stole from you to make myself obvious to be found by you for you to do whatever, whatever you want to, for what I did to you. So you want to be a trustworthy person, a, somebody you can depend on. I can invest this in that person. I know that um, my investment is going to return double or even if it's just getting something good out of the person as far as encouragement, feeling true love, feeling true brother, like feeling like you really got a brother or a sister or a family member or something, feeling like this person is somebody to you um, off of your investment. That's a, a trustworthy person, but somebody that's trying to get it fast. Hey, Eric, God bless you, sis. Somebody that's trying to get it fast, they might get it fast. And you know what I mean? 21 says, thank you. 21 saying, 21 says, showing partiality is never good. Yet someone will do wrong for a mere piece of bread. Showing partiality is never good. Yet some will do wrong for a mere piece of bread. For real. I can, listen, I can elaborate on every verse of this scripture. Listen, there's people out there that don't even care about you. Can you pay their bills? Can you take care of them? They don't care about you. It's what you can do for them. Some people will do you wrong. They will lie to you, hurt you, break your heart, send you on this fake road like they love you. And all they're doing is taking from you, getting over on you, using you. You know, they don't care. It says showing partiality is never good. Yet some will do wrong for a mere piece of bread. I see brothers do it all the time. Hey, I'm going to get, hey, man, look, I don't even like this cat, but hey, he got this, that, and the third. We're going to rob this. We're going to rob. We're going to get up. 
Listen, I ain't with it. I ain't with it. I, don't, I can't trust you. I can't trust you. You're not going to be up in my business because I don't know if you're here to support me or try to get me robbed. <laughs> Verse 22 says, greedy people, greedy people try to get rich quick, but don't realize they're headed for poverty. Wow. This is like the last four verses have been about trying to get rich quick. <laughs> I used to have this um, picture in my bathroom that said hard work is the key to success, but most people try to pick the lot. When you work hard for your money, you appreciate it. When you cheat and, you know, back doors and shortcuts, it's gone fast too. And then you keep trying to take these back doors and shortcuts to get it again. Work hard for your money because you appreciate it and you know you earned it when you do that. Using people and getting over on folk, mm -mm, ain't going to work. In the end, people appreciate honest criticism far more than flattery. That speaks for itself. Tell me what, listen, honest criticism, don't tell me what I want to hear. Don't butter me up. Don't try to make me feel good. Tell me what I need to hear so I can correct it. The Bible says that a wise man is given to correction. So, Wise people want to know where they're going wrong at so they can fix it. So it, it makes them all the wiser. But when you are foolish, when somebody tries to correct you, you get in your feelings, you get mad. Don't come for me. Uh, and next thing you know, you hit rock bottom. Person try to help you, try to correct you. Try to, you know, it's not that a person is trying to be your mother or your father. They might see something wrong or see you heading in a direction that is not, um, good for you so they hey if i was you i wouldn't hang around those people have you ever did that you warn your kids or somebody when you was young they warn you hey get away hey, watch out for them people right there man i wouldn't something about them and then you don't listen you end up in jail with them <laughs> or you end up in trouble with them it says anyone who steals from his father and mother and says what's wrong with that is no better than a murderer mm -mm -mm. Aramis, Aramis, what 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 do you want? What? I see it. Yeah, I see it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. It says anyone. It's a cock. It's a moth. It's a moth. Yeah, a moth. Anyone who steals from his father and mother and says, what's wrong with that? Is no better than a murderer. I don't see it. I couldn't. Look. Now, when I was young, like third, fourth grade, I took $5 from my mama. She whooped my butt. I never stole nothing again from her. I don't even feel right taking stuff from my mom or father. Like, that means you got a heart. Some people don't care. I don't care. Shoot. She get it. And t nah, stealing from your mother and father, you know worse than a murderer. I mean, uh, is, you in the same boat as a murderer. Like, how can you steal from the person that brought you into the world? Like, you see that, that, ooh, that's deep. That's deep. It says, greed causes fighting. Trust in the Lord leads to prosperity. Greed causes fighting. Trusting the Lord leads to prosperity. Yeah, that speaks for itself. Those who trust their own insight are foolish, but anyone who walks in wisdom is safe. I love this. This kind of reminds me of Proverbs chapter three, verse five and six. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he shall direct your path. All of this, your own understanding of stuff, that's what gets you in some of the holes that you in. That's what gets you in some of the ruts that you in, trying to figure things out on your own. If you cast your cares on the Lord, if some of these things you can't figure out or you don't get, give it to God. That's the perfect person to give, person to give it to because he will never leave you nor forsake you. But sometimes we get in the way of that. We don't trust God. So we try to take matters, matters into our own hands. But when you say, Lord, you have to do this for me, because if I do it, I might mess some stuff up. Let him fix it. You give it to, if you could just give it to him and wait, wait, you'll see what he do for you. But nine times out of 10, most adults, we try to take matters into our own hands or try to fix something that only God can fix. And that shows that we're doubting God. You know, it shows that we don't have trust in God. But it says right here, those who trust in their own insight are foolish. 
but anyone who walks in the wisdom who walks in wisdom is safe whoever gives to the poor will lack nothing but those who close their eyes to poverty will be cursed oh my god right right come on Michaela you see that it says those who give to the poor will lack nothing A lot of us are afraid to give to the poor because we think it's taken away from a bill that we need to pay, or we think it's taking food out of our children's mouth. Trust in God on this one. I be when I be getting when I get money, so I be I go with intentions to give at least twenty dollars or something to somebody that don't got nothing. Like I'm always I'm always when I go to Walmart, my eyes is fixed on it. Where's somebody at that needs something? Lord, send them my direction. I remember I, this has happened to me a few times. I went to Walmart with $10 or $15, $20, and I, and I say, Lord, lead me to the person you want me to give this to. And I will go shopping, get all my stuff, and get all the way back to my car, get in the car, about to crank the car, and somebody will walk up out of nowhere. Excuse me, is, do you think you can help me with? And I'm like, man, I've been waiting for you all day. Boom. And they like, wow, you know, they wasn't expecting 20 bucks. I always say that. I always say that. I always say that, man, I've been waiting for you all day. I was wondering where you was at. They always look at me like, what are you talking about? But before I even got to the store, I already asked God, if somebody needs something, Lord, put them in my path. I don't want to give this money to who you didn't assign me to give it to. And I will be on my way out of there. And a person will come out of nowhere like, excuse me, is it? do you think you can help me? Can I wash your window? No, no, man, you got to do nothing here. Matter of fact, I was looking for you. Where you was at? Here, take this $15. And they looked at Oh, wow. And I hit him with a Jesus loves you. Do you want me to pray for you or something like that? And, and go on about my business. But I'm not rich, but the Lord be coming through. He be coming through for me. You know, I ain't, I ain't balling. I, you know, I don't, I, I'm, I'm able to pay my rent. I'm able to buy some food, you know, stuff like that. But I'm not wanting for nothing. If, you know, I don't really have too much that I, you know, because stuff, and, and this might just be for me. This might not be for y'all. Stuff be distracting me from God. So I, I'll be glad that I don't got some of the stuff that I be wanting. Because I feel like if I had it, I wouldn't give God the attention that I'm giving, that I need to give him. So I tell God, give it to me how you see I should have it. Bless me according to your satisfaction, not my satisfaction. Amen. Ooh, that was deep. Lord, bless me according to your satisfaction. I think we should tell God that one. That's a good one right there. Lord, bless me according to your satisfaction. Amen. All right, we almost out of here, y'all. We almost out of here. Oh, yeah, that's the last one. It says, when the wicked take charge, people go into hiding. When the wicked meet, when the wicked meet disaster, the godly flourish. Mm. When wicked people lose their spot, the godly flourish. You know, um, be prepared. Be prepared because there's a lot of wicked leaders on all different um, platforms from social media to government, from the streets to church. And God is about to do a, um, he's about to separate the wheat from the tear. Um you guys know where your hearts are with the Lord. You guys know where you stand with God. Don't give up on that. It might not look like um, it might not look like we winning right now. It might not look like we winning right now. And a lot of people might be saying, "Look at them. <laughs> that, ain't no, that stuff ain't." Don't even worry about it. Just keep on going because we are going to um, we are going to rise. God be moving in seasons, and right now we just in the season of just chill. You know. We know God. This is a lifestyle and a life um, that we're going to live with him until we go on to be with him. So up, down, we still got to still be content in God. Even when we on top, it's content. When we at the bottom, content. You know, and if we stay like this, we find ourselves in an area that's untouchable. Man can't take us from this area because it's a place where they're not even trying to reach because they think they too high. And the ones that are trying to do the low stuff, 
They can't get to us because God has us set aside. I said this yesterday. The Lord is hiding us from the attacks of the enemy. The devil can't see the strategy that God has planned for us. And this is a place that even God doesn't want us to see all the way because he doesn't want us to get in the way or mess it up. So we got to be content in God and just know, hey, I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I love him when times are good. I love him when times are bad and nothing's going to change that. And I'm comfortable right here. Amen. But yeah, I just want to read um, that proverb. It took up all my time, but I'm going to play another song. I want to play. I, I did want to play this song right here. It's my song. This is my song. And it's called What a Friend by Chandler Moore. Um, I pray that the proverb that was read today had meaning and um, it encourages you to want to read the proverbs um, for yourself. I would encourage you to do so because it lines up. It lines up. I mean, the whole Bible lines up with our life, but Proverbs just, it's just like the Lord gave us this to get us through every day as far as being wise, as far as operating in wisdom. Um, and the wisdom comes from the Lord, not our own wisdom. You know, um, it seems like our own understandings is what's getting us in trouble. Our own wisdom is what's getting us in trouble. Um, but when we got the wisdom of the Lord, the wisdom that the Lord wants us to have, <laughs> when we got the wisdom the Lord wants us to have, um, we can't go wrong. You know, God is good. And I truly thank God for everything he is doing. All of these great things he's laying before me to um, keep me busy in the spirit, to keep me busy in him. Amen. Oh, God bless you, mom. Y'all yeah, was supposed to be today. My cousin. 47th birthday pool party big old it's popping it's like a hundred some people there i wasn't um things didn't line up so i took it i said you know what god must not want me there i was looking at the facebook um because i was in the group for the party to be invited he put us in this group everybody that was going man it was so much liquor and that was one of the requirements if you come bring a bottle and it's like a hundred people there i said it's no reason for me to be there, honestly. Like, I mean, I understand my cousin's 47th birthday. You know, he wanted me to come to celebrate him, celebrate his birthday. But the Lord did not allow me to um, be able to get there. My babysitter, the people we had, me and my wife had somebody, uh, her, her family to babysit. They ended up all catching colds. We thought it was COVID, but it was. They all tested negative for COVID. But the whole house, dad, mom. And all the kids, all sick. So that was my confirmation that God didn't want me to go. So I said, you know what? I'm not tripping. I'm, I'm so glad that God took that needing to party um, feeling out of me. You know, some of us, we really feel like we have to go party. We have to go hang out. I've been working all this week. I deserve to go have a drink and party. I thank God that I don't have that no more. I mean, it's no shade to the people that still um, like to party and stuff like that. I'm thankful that I don't, I don't have that want to want to get out and do something. I love sitting right here at my house with my wife, my kids and my dog. And y'all, y'all the only friends that I got. Y'all been for the last three, four years, y'all my family and friends. And there's no shade, it doesn't take away from my real family, but this is where God has me and I enjoy this. Oh, wow. Well, we pray and hold her up in prayer, mom, that she will have a speedy recovery. Um, and that the Lord will cover her and strengthen her immune system in Jesus' name. Um, I said, people have to be careful. There's so many people. They, uh, I seen an um, a article. I got the notification. I don't know how I got CNN, but CNN notifications pop up on my phone. That's where I be getting all these articles from because they pop up and I click it and read it. Thousands of flights canceled because of uh, the Labor Day weekend. Um, partying that's going on a lot of people are in vegas right now and i said this is crazy everybody want to be out that's another reason why i believe god didn't want me to go to this party because COVID look like it's still lingering around you know and i don't got time for that you know i ain't got time for that so i know god is protecting us i know god is covering us but god also tells us not to go places too he also tells you know we know that we're covered we know that god is covering us his hands is over us, but some of the stuff we, we have to listen. If if God if, if it's in God's will 
for you to stay home, stay home. Don't say I'm covered and go because God is saying there is where this is happening. Don't go there so it won't happen to you. And we won't listen to that and we'll go with this cocky, I'm covered type of mentality and boom, it'll happen to us. Marvelous. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's beautiful, Nay. I said, who is this? I know, I know when it's beautiful, Nay, because she always put the speaker thing in the front and the rally flag at the back. Hey, sis, welcome back. But yeah, let's get into this song. Let's get into this song. I dedicate this song to the whole room, y'all. I dedicate this song to the whole room. Right. It does override God's protection. You know, that's like how, before I play this music, that's just like how Satan tried to tell Jesus Jump off this high mountain. Didn't the scripture say that God will give you angels to charge, will give char the angels charge to catch you before you hit the ground? So when you go somewhere that you know is that is um that can harm your health, and you just God got me covered. That's the same thing. You going and doing that with what Lucifer tried to do to Jesus. Go. Didn't God say he going to send angels? To, so when you, I'm going to this party. I don't care if they do got covered. I'm COVID. I'm covered. No, wisdom will say, you know what? I'm going to sit my tail right here and I'm not going to go because the Lord is leading me to stay. I'm not going to press past that. I'm not going to say, you know what? I'm going anyways. No, I'm going to sit right here and I'm going to pray that the people at that party don't get COVID. Amen. 